The moon is a rock on a mountain. The lunatics have taken over the asylum, waiting on the rapture. To keep your prices down, to beat you to the house. Oh, I'm not that part yet. I messed it up. Anyhow, uh, hey y'all, uh, this is Warren. I'm back with another tutorial, and today it's Radiohead's. The Daily Mail. Um, this is a song that is just crazy, crazy, crazy. And it uh, was commissioned by somebody. Uh, his name is William Gray. I don't know if he was cool with me shouting out his name. But apparently he and his lovely daughter are looking forward to this tutorial. I hope I do it justice. Um, so if you are uh, looking to dive in and you've been waiting for this song uh, to be broken down, you can thank William for uh, commissioning this chord chart and tutorial. So what I'm going to be doing is breaking down the song section by section and following along with uh, a chord chart I created for myself to learn the song. And you can download it as well below so you can follow along and see what I'm talking about. It's broken down so that each column represents a 16th, so you're counting a 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a with the song. And every column has something, even if it's silence, every column has something so that as you're counting along with the song, there are directions for what your right hand and your left hand are doing. This is a little different than standard notation, um, but for those of you who have been following along with this channel for a while, you know that uh, I like to get into the composition aspect to understand kind of what's going on from a, a music theory point of view, um, appreciating, um, appreciating the, the song's kind of complexities and the areas that repeat, the things that are different and just kind of using that to really get deeper into just not passively listening to a song, but really uh, understanding it and loving it in like a whole intellectual way, I guess, even though that word is kind of, the, no, just maybe more like heady and heart together, you know, like, like Radiohead's music. Anyway, uh, this song is pretty tricky not from a playing standpoint necessarily, although I haven't mastered it yet. You can see I flubbed the beginning. But it's tricky from a song structure point of view. There are lots of sections to the song and little variations so that getting from one section to the next is not the same. Even though there is uh, some repetition, there's still a lot of changes within. So you're gonna get from the intro to the verse differently than you would get from the verse, uh, the first verse to what I'm calling the second verse. And you'll see what I'm talking about as I get through it. The other thing that's really great about this song and tricky um, and kind of quirky is that even though it's kind of almost like a rebirth of, of another song that Radiohead did, which is uh, called You and Whose Army, in that it's like this cool, piano-based rock song. It uses a really like a bluesy mixolydian uh, scale to, to shout out the end of the song. Um, the cool thing about it is this one has so much modulation, which is just a, a music theory nerd term for key changes. So we're going from the key of D to the key of E flat mixolydian, which is not the craziest thing in the world. But then we go again from E flat mixolydian down to C mixolydian. And then to end the song, we're going to go all the way down to B flat mixoly mixolydian. So it's going up a half step, down a minor third, and then down a whole step. We just don't hear 
key changes like that very often in popular music. It's just it's just really cool. I I have color coded each section um, corresponding to the key that that section is in. Um, uh, on the chord chart. So the chord chart has four colors and each color you see when it changes that's when we go into the new uh, key. So um, if you've been following along for a while you understand that uh, reading this chord chart is is not necessarily uh, gonna make sense the very first time you look at it. But as you follow along with this tutorial I'm just going to walk you through what the right and the left hand are doing um, and you'll see that it's represented not in standard notation, but in degrees of the scale using numbers and chord numerals um, to help you really appreciate what's going on in the song from, from that songwriting perspective. So without any further ado, here it is. Here's the main riff. So we're going to start off with uh, the main riff, which repeats a bunch of times, okay? In the right hand we have a D major, that's your D, F sharp, A, and that's the one chord of the, the key that we're in, which is a key of D major. And the left hand is going to do this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So before I get to beats three and four, there, I'm going to show you the left hand is going eight, eight, seven, six, flat six in the key of D major. Okay, so right away we have kind of a, a like a foreign note um, in in this song, just kind of giving you a sense of kind of unease right from the beginning, and that happens on beats one, two, three. And that chord is played quite a few times in this song, so you'll want to get used to it, even though it sounds kind of almost like suspenseful, you know? Um, this chord is, if, if we condense it, if you look at it, that is an augmented, B flat augmented with a major seventh on top. That is a ooh, unsettling feeling. And uh, Tom York just lingering on this chord feels really strange, but in a cool way, you know? Um, so that chord is gonna end the main riff, okay? So from the main riff, which is gonna be used in the intro, the first verse, and what I'm calling the second verse, all of that is what I just showed you. It just repeats and repeats and repeats, okay? So the intro, is just the piano, but the verse one that it follows into is preceded by this, what I'm calling the link to verse one. So after the main riff, right there, okay? Instead of doing that, what we're gonna do is gonna give this, this chord a little bit longer of a, just a lingering before we go the moon is a rock. Okay, and so that's your link to verse one instead where we're gonna just play that chord four times. Okay, so really funky there. Um, foregoing the, okay. Now what is that you might ask? This is a two, one, five, one in the key of D major, meaning one, two, three, four, five, two, one, five, one, okay. That is going to happen while you do the left hand on that flat six. So you're going to go those two notes at the same time. So two, one, five, one. And these are eighth notes, eighth notes, while you're doing a quarter note in the left hand, meaning you're going to have. note and then that note together with the left hand and right and this is in between okay so uh, that cleans up the main riff and linking up to the first verse now we're gonna uh, play through the same main riff but to get to the second verse we're gonna end the main riff a little differently we're gonna go Singing with you. 
now what was that? I just played that B augmented again, okay? And I left it hanging, not for four beats, which everything so far in this song has been per measure, four beats per measure, one, two, three, four. But you're gonna hold this two, for two beats only, so two. Singing we So that chord is gonna be only two beats, and the chord chart also shows this when you look there and it's just a black bar over beats, um, beats three and four, showing you how to get to the verse, uh, the second verse. Now, the vocal melody is kind of not what I would think of as a verse melody, but I'm calling it verse two because there's actually another section here that I would call the pre-chorus. So verse one linking to verse two has a short measure of two beats. So once you link that into verse two, Verse two is gonna link to the pre-chorus, and at the end of the pre-chorus, a little spoiler alert, there's another two beat measure, okay? And that's also notated all on the chord chart, which you can find below. So, um, the link to the pre-chorus, let's say we finish playing the second verse, and we wanna head over to the pre-chorus. How do we get there? Well, the way that we get there is similar to the main riff, but instead of going three, four, on beat four, we're going to hang on this C sharp here, which is the seven of the key of D. So eight, eight, seven, seven in the left hand, and not going to the B instead, not going down to the sixth degree of the scale. So we're going to do that again. One, two, three. left hand is going to do that while your right hand does and what was that it's C C which is the flat seven of the key and you're gonna go when you uh, count the figure four e and a uh, one three four e and a uh, one so it happens on a 16th note figure there where that low C crashes in on beat one that downbeat and it's preceded by this C above on the A uh of four. And you'll see that also in the chord chart. Uh, shout out about the chord chart, Warren. All right, so the right hand is gonna do this, which is the two, the five, and the flat seven, with E, A, C. And you're gonna go, and you're gonna move your A to your G. So that's your right hand on one and two. Three, four, one, and two, three, together. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, a one, and a two, e and a three, e and a four, e and a one, e and a two, e and a three, e and a four, e and a. So that's a little tricky. The first time I tried to play that, I definitely uh, didn't play it as nicely as I just played it. You know. I, must say I played it pretty nice there. Uh, but the next chord that follows it, okay, is gonna be a half step down. So the entire chord just shifts down by a half step. And what you're gonna get in the, the left hand anyway, it shifts down by a half step to B, the sixth degree of the scale. And the right hand, you move down one key over on the piano, but one key's width down on the piano, but really what's moving is the E is moving down to the G, and the G stays the same, and the B, the C has moved down to a B. So that's your one, four, six, and that's the next note that follows the G. G goes down to F sharp, which is a four to the three, so, so you get three, Four. Okay? So the same type of figure, they call that a motif. It's a, it's a fancy music theory word again. But a little motif there for you, okay? And it's going from C sus six, going to C, to B minor sus flat six okay, to B minor. So those are those two chords. If you wanted to, you know, ever translate that 
chord progression to some other instrument, those are the two chord names. That's how you construct those chords. And then when you go from the C, two, three, four, you just bang on that chord. Same thing with the B minor. And then you got this really strange, this is, this is the section that threw me for a loop the first many times, I don't know how many times I had to listen to this part uh, to figure out what was going on, but it was like just this weird section. And you get this really strange note here where you go, okay, maybe it's not strange, you don't think it's strange, I'm the one who, who thinks it's strange. Um, and it's gonna be a key change to E flat mixolydian. How do I know it's in the key of E flat? Um, that was the wrong note. Woo! So we're going from, and we end up here. This is how I know it's in the, how we know that it's in the key of E flat. Playing off security, got through the gate. So it's Tom York singing a bluesy mixolydian there starting with the the E flat as the main note but what we got here is a the same figure in the left hand and it's going to be paired instead of with this that's going to be paired with this E flat and the high E flat which are the one of the key the one and the eight and if you thought six meant B, well, you would have been correct for the D major scale, but in the green section, six means the C, because that's, we're in E flat mixolydian right now, okay? So I know if it feels a little frustrating, or confusing, you know, why don't you just write sheet music warrant? Well, I don't like sheet music, it doesn't help me, I, I can't really read it that well. Um, but I think, you know, this helps you understand the melodic and harmonic function. Just the same, if not better, because you can read sheet music and not understand. Um, but anyway, my little pet peeve. So what is that? I'm doing, which is six, flat seven, eight. So that figure again, a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E. Now that would be beat three, which um, I spoiled earlier, uh, that instead of beat three, what we do is skip to a new beat one. So that's just a one, two beat measure, and we end up in the pre-chorus. This is how we know we're in the pre-chorus. We play this E flat major chord with no fifth. So the left hand does this when it lands on the C, the right hand does an octave, and then to the F, and back to the same E flat, and then the G, G, E flat. So in the key, that is one, A, two, A, three, three and A, so three and A are at the same time, and then we're in the What is that chord? Okay, so in the pre-chorus, uh, we have a one bar, uh, we have one bar of this, and then we enter pre-chorus, the second section, right? We have that, and then you, you know what that is, that's your D flat with your F and E flat above, just like we played before, and then, okay, this is an F, Dominant seven, which is the the major two of of uh, the key that we're in E flat mixolydian. So that's your left hand is going to do F. You could do F and C, which is a power chord, or F and F, which is an octave. Either way, it doesn't matter too much. It, it sounds they both sound great. And on the right hand, I have a A and an E flat. So you put that together, okay? You get this. If you put in the C, which is the fifth of the chord, it sounds nice as well. So we got, again, let's run through that again. That's with the C, 
and again, I'll show you with the octave. Sounds a little bit more spaced out, in my opinion. But that's your F major with the minor seventh above, making it an F dominant seven. Tricky, really, really cool. If you're writing a song and you want to throw in a throw in somebody for a loop, it's very Beatles-esque, you throw in a major two chord. Or better yet, throw in a dominant seven on the two chord. So you continue after two beats of this F chord, okay? And we got... And then you do this again. Which is, it should sound familiar. What did we just do there? It was a two beat phrase leading into the pre-chorus. Now this is the, the two beat phrase come back again that takes us back to the pre-chorus, okay? So we're back in the pre-chorus and then once we go through the pre-chorus again, everything is the same. Pre-chorus, second section, which I'm calling pre-chorus B, that's the same, which I just went through. But you play through that a couple of times according to uh, the way it's recorded. And then you go from pre-chorus A, which is this, to pre-chorus, uh, to the link, sorry, to the link to the chorus. So instead of going to pre-chorus B, we skip over it the third time we play pre-chorus A. And pre-chorus A, third time, leads straight into um, this right here. I'm oh, sorry. So the same chord that we played before, which is your D flat on the bottom of your octave. Sorry, played that wrong note twice. I must like the G today for some reason. F and E flat. And so you play that twice, and it's another two-bar phrase, a two-bar measure, leading into, ooh, C major. Okay, so we got, ooh, wow, probably the most powerful part of the song, going from your D flat to your strong, strong C major. And I'll probably voice it with the fifth on the, in the bass. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We're now in the blue section. And the blue section corresponds to the key of C. Okay, C mixolydian in this case. You get that no. And before this point, we've had C minor. But this is a boom. First time C major. Uh, grabs your attention, right? And so we got uh, one, two. This is probably the coolest part of the song. And then one, two, three, and a, three, and a, four. There we go, sorry. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's jogging my memory now. So one, two, three. your flat three going to your um ooh, yeah your dominant seven chord again over two and so that beatles s chord again this time in a different key and then you're gonna go to your f all right and then f major is just your f and your c f a c above right that's your triad there so taking it again from, taking it from the C major section again. Two, three, four, and a one. There we go, sorry. There it is, two, three. And then we're gonna end up at the F, okay? So those chords again, I'll run through them one more time. It's C major, and it's voiced in a fifth in the left hand, and then the first inversion, C major on your right hand. Going, that's your E G C going to right hand holds the G and C, but your left hand goes to the fifth starting on E flat. So you got E flat and B flat there. Nice, nice little flat three chord there. Um, so very major, uh, uh, major. What is it? We got a major blues chord progression here, where you, where you have a flat three coming in and. 
you know, kind of blending Mixolydian and Dorian for those of you who study blues, harmonizing the blues. And then we're gonna go to your very Beatles-esque dominant seven chord on two, which is the D, okay? So the D is the two of the key of C Mixolydian. And the fifth is in your left hand with the E and A, and then you're gonna, okay? You have that F sharp and your C. Very nice, you can throw the A in there if you like. It fills it out nicely, okay? And then to your F major, and that's your F and C. Triad there, and then that would be nice if that were your chord progression, and it stopped there. Coldplay has something like this too. It's really, really cool. Back when they were, you know, doing their their thing. These days, I don't, don't listen to Coldplay too much anymore. <laughs> but uh, the next one is, woo, and this is a sharp four in the chord. Okay, in the key an F sharp, a C sharp, an F sharp, an A sharp, and a C. Oh, this is strange. Okay. One chord, oh, uh, sorry. This chord goes to this chord. Very chromatic. And it's almost like this chord just has nothing to do with the key of C mix lady at all. And what it really does, I, I think, is it's it's just giving you that extra hit in the gut when you're hitting the gut right down there. Just a hit in the gut when you're trying to go back to the, the one chord. And it just throws you for like, oh, whoa, that's so cool. It's just like really foreign and, and fun. And so again, how would you play that now, okay? In time, what you would do is one, two, three, four, one, two, Three and a four E and a one and a two E and a three and a four E and a one and a two E and a three and a four E and a sorry, put the wrong note there. And I played it on a syncopated, it's on beat four. <laughs> one, two, a three and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three and a four E and a on beat four. That little sharp four chord is on beat four. So stringing that all together, what would that sound like in context? There go. another chorus but it wouldn't be Radiohead if you just did another chorus to finish out the song so of course Tom York has to do something crazy and go down a whole step to B flat oh sorry that's not right there we go hey, sorry hey. I haven't played in B flat in a while Keep hitting that. Sorry about that, guys. A little rusty on B flat. You're gonna hit that and finish the song on B flat. So what are those chords? How do you finger them? That's your B flat and your F in the left hand. That's a fifth. And then a D and a B flat. That's your one, five, three, three, five, eight. In the key of B flat mixolydian, and you play that. And then the fourth chord comes uh, from this D flat here and that is your D flat A flat in the left hand and then your F 
F and your B flat on the right hand, and that is a that's an interesting chord there. It is a it's an add six chord, and then you're gonna have your major uh, two chord again, the dominant seven version of that on C. So that's your C G E B flat, and then you're gonna go to your E flat major, and that's E flat, B flat in the left hand, and then G and B flat in the right hand. That's your standard major chord there. You can throw the low E flat in there if you like, or above. Sounds good too. And then you're gonna go to. I don't think he plays that again. But for some reason, I have it written here. I don't think he does the sharp four in this version. It's just the four chords. I'm, I'm going to take that out of the chord chart. Just those four chords. So going from the E flat to end the song. <laughs> oh, my fingers. Uh, they just won't cooperate with me. But, you know, hey, I'm learning this song with you guys, too. So uh, B flat major ends the song. Okay, and if you're, you know, trying to learn how to play it all in one sitting, uh, stop. That's just not realistic. Uh, what you want to do is download this chord chart so that everything that I'm saying, uh, you can see it represented visually. It shows you all of the notes, all of the keys that the song modulates into, and more importantly, an overview at the bottom right hand corner of the, the theory grid showing you how many times to play each section. So you go intro, 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 link to verse one twice, play that twice, and then verse one, verse one, verse, you'll see it. And uh, yeah, if you like this tutorial, again, thank you uh, to William Gray. Send your thanks. Uh, leave them in the comments. Uh, I'm available for commission if you want a, a custom tutorial, a chord chart, a MIDI file, uh, a drum part, electronic drum part, broken down and sequenced if you need production uh, for guitar. Um, just, you know, hit me up. If you have a creative project you'd like uh, uh, my help on, please reach out. I have Skype students uh, teaching them music theory, ear training, guitar, and also some basic music production. Um, and all wrapped up in a passion for songwriting. Great, great, great songs. That's, that's what we're all about here. So uh, thank you again and happy learning. Bye.